Very nice. So welcome everybody. We're doing the uh, Secrets of Security uh, series again. And today we're going to be talking about um, network monitoring and things of that nature. So welcome. Uh, as a reminder, we are your regular presenters for this. So we've got me, Joshua Fultz, uh, CISO at eFolder Axiant, lots of security experience, and we have with us George Anderson, senior. Uh, George, is that still the wrong uh, Still the wrong title, title, title but doesn't matter. I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix it someday. <laughs> yeah, I know. Someday. So I'm getting there. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah we have <laughs> Great. All right. So our agenda today is a little bit shorter, but we have a lot more content on each of the topics. So we're going to talk about accelerated network threat detection and some of the products coming down the pipe on the web root side of things. And then I'm going to go into some detail about network monitoring and building a secure operations center for um, your environment as an MSP. As a reminder, at eFolder Accident, we've got lots of backup products. We back up to the cloud. We back up with uh, file and sync and share with Anchor. We have our, our full image-based backups, which is Replibit and the BRC product. And then our original eFolder backup product um, for backup file and recovery. And you can go to our website, get more information on that, things of that nature. George, do you want to talk about this at all? No, just to say that's that's who we are. I think the important thing is really to take from that is we're really highly focused on the MSP sector and also uh, you know managed services full stop and helping people uh, you know deliver effective security in that space. That's really excellent. Cool. And just then we've had really great growth on that as well because of that. Okay. All right. So here's our CIS controls, the top 20, which we're building this whole series on. Uh, we're covering a lot of these in a lot of different series. Uh, that's more of a topical discussion, but today we're going to be focused on number six and number 16, uh, which is basically around network monitoring and analysis and trying to gather security and event information out of that monitoring and account control. All right. And George, I'm going to hand it off to you uh, to go right. through the accelerated network detection, threat detection. Yeah. So this is, um, this is really a little bit of a early, early heads up. You'll find if you go to our website, we have something called Flowscape on there, but we're not, we're not been actually actively, if you like, selling it to MSP. So this is really, in some ways, this is something new. Um, and it's something we've been designed, we're actually designing particularly for MSPs. And it's a new way of sort of solving your, you know, look, looking and be able to secure your clients' networks and, and be able to do that in a far more holistic way. So we see a number of challenges that are facing MSPs at the moment. There's obviously, you know, how do you respond to insider threats, both non-malicious and malicious, uh, and especially if you're sort of Elon Musk at the moment, you probably would want to be doing that because he's been declaring all these things about people, uh, you know, sabotaging insider threats at Tesla. Um, loss of customer data or IP equally a sort of a concern and a growing concern among, among small businesses particularly because they have usually quite a lot of IP. If they're a startup, you know, they're based around IP and that, you know, they want to protect that that area. Mobility and bring your own device, IoT security, which everybody you know, obviously, obviously talks about, but actually very few do much about, but uh, a good, this is a very good way of sort of tackling that. And really also trying to give you a far better visibility across the, the threat landscape that exists in that particular network. So by that, we're talking about being able to look at not only network traffic that's coming in and out of the network and, and being able to use that in a way to, to detect threats and mitigate them at a very early stage, but also looking at traffic that's traversing within the network. And you obviously that's, that helps you with uh, looking at inside the threats and, and that area and understanding that and be able to then you know, apply machine learning and various things to make that sort of, uh, to very, very accurately let you sort of tighten down on those things. Obviously feeds into things like SIMS and CMs if you want to do that. But actually, uh, this is something also can act standalone as well. But if you want to want to add more data to it, you can you could also do that as well. So um, really, what we're trying to do is design something that's pretty frictionless, pretty seamless, uh, and you can just plug it in and it works. And that's really what we did. Was we bought the company uh, CyberRoom about a couple of years ago. What we've been doing is really intensely, and it sounds sounds like a long time, but it does take a long time to do these things well. Is intensely developing that product to to make it that just literally a plug and play product really for something which most of the industry regard, or, you know, if you look at companies like Dart Trace and other things, which I think maybe fall close to this, we consider to be very bleeding edge, if you like, in, in where the security landscape is. 
Next slide, please. George, what's the need for this uh, as opposed to traditional si signature-based solutions like IDS and things of that nature? Are, are lots yeah, of things I, being missed on the network? Yeah, I think the problem is that there's lots of, you know, siloed devices tend to, you know, individual security point products tend to look at individual things, and it's quite easy for them to miss other things they're not designed to look at or not designed to sort of inspect, if you like. So. I think I think what this product does is it, it simply taps into your network. It looks at all the metadata. In fact, it's quite clever in the way it works. It sort of it looks at the metadata of all the packets. It analyzes all those packets and where they're going. Um, and because of the metadata can do that, so it doesn't really matter if the environment's encrypted or not. Because obviously, a lot more environments are moving to becoming encrypted these days too. So it can look at all those traffic flows, if you like, that are going on both inside the network and also trying to go outside the network too. The inbound and outbound traffic coming in and out. And, and it's really device agnostic, so that's why we don't worry if it's an IoT device or a SCADA device. Um, it enables you basically to to have a, a very very fast handle on all the all the all, all the things that are actually connecting to your network, all the things that are communicating within your network, and able to put that in the context of threats as well and, and what threats they can pose, and use these both machine learning and lots of rules and lots of and lots of very clever sort of if you like uh, threat scientist type stuff to to narrow down and actually get rid of the noise, um, which is the other great problem. And the problem with a lot of security is you can get lots of information and you fit it into the SIMCM, but then sifting through that noise to find things which are really, really are desperate and important. Uh, and this this product aims to you know to, to try and answer a lot of those things and reduce that noise right down as well. So so the need really is how do I really get very early visibility of threats within my network and I'm able to either do something about them either automatically or actually manually. Um, and you know, I would I would argue the whole security industry is going towards a state where it's going to look at things, doing things automatically rather than manually, because basically if you don't do it automatically, if you wait for the human being to make the decision, it's it's basically too late. So it's uh so it's it's starting us down that way, and it's very much about you know all the things, all the buzzwords people are talking about AI, machine learning, all those things, which we've actually been doing for about ten years. And the guys that we bought, you know, San Diego team that, we, that are actually developing this product are, you know, been I've been I've been at it for years as well, and sort of you know very much you know data scientists focus on this area. Um, so it's uh, so that's it. Sorry, it's a very long answer. <laughs> <laughs> Probably giving you most of the present most of the presentation in, in the in, in the slide, but let's go to the next slide. I hope that answered it. Anyway, that's, if you've got questions, please ask. We'll, we'll go. Um, obviously, the challenges is trying to answer some of the challenges. Obviously, networks are propagating threats faster than we can stop them. So that's human beings again. That sort of thing. Visibility can be limited, and I think the visibility, you know, is, you know, I, I know that MSPs are investing in tools like Ovid and various other things to to get a better idea of network topographies, what's going on there. But you know they're not threat tools. They're more about sort of you know what have I got under my management? What's you know what's connecting? What's you know, you know, does it need patches? that vulnerable, etc. So this whole idea of normal versus abnormal communications. Um, the technology actually grew out of. Um, in fact, it's still used by the city of San Diego, which is a smart city. So they were looking at lots of different sort of devices connecting in everything from ambulances and fire engines and police cars and and sort of things that maybe you wouldn't sort of normally expect. Parking meters. <laughs> you know, different sort of things that if you like, connect into a network and are managed by the network. So, so if you like, the, the challenges are that sort of, that, that obviously that very dispersed as well network that you've got out there. And then looking at ways of securing communications. So next slide, I don't want to dwell. Cause. So I think how we're doing this and, and, and what's interesting is we're expanding our use of threat intelligence to the network layer. So at the moment, as you probably know, we have a, a different business called Bright Cloud Threat Intelligence. It's offers TI feeds around things like IP reputation, web reputation, URL filtering, a whole lot of, if you like, internet th threat intel that it actually delivers back to about 70 odd vendors now, security vendors and networking vendors. So we, you know, they'll come to us and say, well, I'd like IP reputation, so I want to be able to, you know, block sort of bad IPs uh, trying to communicate with my firewall, whatever. So what we've done is we've, we're obviously correlating and contextualizing that information the whole time. So. One of the ways actually we introduced originally to CyberRoom was the fact that they actually came to us and said, look, we need these feeds to make our product better. And that's how the, how the conversation all started, if you like. Um, we want to give MSPs far better visibility of literally all inbound, internal, and outbound traffic flows um, because we believe that's one of the ways that 
combined with our other technologies, you're going to be able to detect advanced persistent threats and those slow, you know, those things that are slow to develop and things that people miss for ages and ages, and also be able to very quickly identify malicious communications and things which, you know, it's very obvious that that server should not be connecting to the internet or should not be talking to that application or whatever. So uh, that's very key for us. Um, and we think that adds a huge amount of value to the MSP to, to give a far more comprehensive uh, comprehensive uh, solution to their customers because because basically you're, you're combining you know what's going on in the network you're adding external correlated contextualized intelligence to that you're adding what information if you've got our endpoint security what information is coming from the endpoints as well and the agents in those endpoints and you know you're connecting that to something where you can you can really mine down and get rid of the noise very quickly and very quickly see um, what's going on and again in a single platform to do that so um, that's where we're, we're headed. So that's what we're working to solve, and that's why maybe it's, as I mentioned earlier, it's taking a little bit of time. Uh, yeah, core ca capabilities. Just just going to run through these. As I said this is this is coming. This is something you'll probably see towards the end of this year, very early next year. I think is the time we're thinking about. But obviously, it visualizes uh, on that, and visualization is a big thing we spend a lot of time in. And again, using machine learning to do that, malware threat detection through machine learning. You know, we've been doing that for ages, if you like, with our, with our endpoint product. We were the, actually the first to market with that, um, something which uh, you know, a lot of the, the newer vendors seem to make claims to. But actually, you know, we won an Edison Award back in 2012 for that innovation, the only IT security company ever to win an innovation award from, from that organization. So I think reflects that. Um, obviously, things like finding out device, fingerprinting, asset discovery, very key because it's you know, those things that just occasionally connect to your network, connect from the outside. There are sort of things that that people tend to miss, um, and doing those analytics, uh, etc. But I mean, I think the whole idea is you know, to prevent breaches, especially anything internal, uh, and also anything internal, external as well, to to help help identify those very quickly. And that what we call security posture entity monitoring. So basically. Just making, you know, if you if you set up the idea of having a security posture, you know, I've got this tolerance level, this risk level, to make sure that um, everything's actually falling within that tolerance and not moving outside it. So that's a, a long way of describing that in a very fancy way. Next slide, please. I, again, I'm not going to dwell on this, but just the fact that it's, it's it's covering internet protection also extends into the data center if you're doing there, obviously device endpoint protection, mobile devices. Um, we're obviously looking for anomalies the whole time. Um, you know, there's insider policy violations, and people talk about threat hunting. This is basically threat hunting on steroids to a certain extent because it actually is is very enriched threat hunting from 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 the minute off, if you like, um, and so you know, it gives gives the capability to do that in, in a very accurate and very you know very fast way. I mean, my whole thought and I thought behind the team behind this is to be able to recognise threats at such an early stage that you have got time to mitigate them and and you, know, you can you can reduce the, you know, any impacts very 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 quickly and, and very immediately and, and and see immediately what to do if if, if you have to do something or if it's not then you know decided just to say well just do it for me. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, sorry about the MSP solution. I see we cut off the slide there, but it's, it, that says sort of threat anomalies, um, threat and anomaly detection. Um, obviously, we're going to have an intuitive UI. You probably recognise some of the web root type of UI there uh, on the right. Um, as I said, it's tailored for MSPs. It includes that device discovery and fingerprinting of those device, devices, and obviously a lot of secure, you know, a lot of good reporting, especially exec reporting, sort of prove value for that. Um, I think the other thing we've we've done is we've taken a product which was originally not multi-tenant uh, and actually created a SaaS multi-tenant product for this because that's obviously what MSPs require the impetus, you know, to spread the cost of an investment in this across a number of different customers. So multi-tenancy is really very, very key. And the fact that it's SaaS based and as, as remote as possible needs to be as well. And the idea has been to reduce that installation time really to a very, very small period of time and make that very, very straightforward. Um, so that's that's where we're going. Um, I can't remember the next slide. I think maybe that's maybe <laughs> us there. Yeah, summary, yeah. I'll see a summary. Um, so it covers IoT and more, so if you're worried about that, then that's obviously there. It's, it's about anomaly detection and picking out those anomalies and, and recognizing them and be able to sort of very quickly mine down and see what they are and decide what to do. It's obviously about threats uh, and what's going on there. It's actually about inside the threats as well, which we mentioned earlier. You're doing a lot of behavioral analytics, so you're sort of saying, you know, the normal thing that happens with these devices, they communicate in this way. They come into these spaces, they communicate to these IP addresses, they go, go outside, et cetera. So you can very much 
benchmark your whole environment, and then use behavioral analytics to actually very quickly isolate any exceptions, any things that sort of falling outside that rule set. Um, another thing I think which is very key from this is that uh, uh, more important than anything these days is that the information that's being used is as near real time or real time threat intelligence as you can possibly have. So, um, so you absolutely know what's happening at that point in time. So, you know, you, what you're making decisions on is highly accurate, and that's that's really a key thing there. And that's really it. So I'm just I'm just really sort of I suppose I'm priming the pump for you uh, for people listening to the the webinar, and also sort of saying that we see this uh, this is one of the ways we see network monitoring going. We're not the only ones. There's some other companies that are are pursuing something similar. Um, tend not to be aimed at the MSP market, tend not to be aimed at SMBs, SMEs, but mainly at the enterprise market, um, and tend to require lots of, uh, if you like, very clever um, security analysts to work, and I think we're trying to we're trying to put that sort of power into the power of MSPs and, uh, and make it a lot uh, a lot easier to use and a lot a lot quicker to use. And that's it, really, yeah, back to you, Josh. Yeah, and that's a great, you know, product line, right? So these anomaly detection and these advanced threat inspection tools. We're, we're looking into a lot of these at eFolder and Axiom. And um, they come with a very hefty price tag. It probably prices yeah. most yeah. MSPs out. So I'm excited that you guys are bringing something like this down the pipe and um, we can get that kind of visibility into the MSPs. So look forward to seeing that as it comes yeah. through. I yeah, I think it's going to be. I, I think it's going. To, I think when you see the total package, because I'm, I'm I'm obviously skirting around some about what we're doing, because I want to limit what we're saying. But I mean, I think when people see the total package and also how little it is, um, I think they're going to be very surprised. But um, anyway, okay, it's good. It's going to be good news. <laughs> That's great. All right, so I'm going to dive a little bit into. There were some questions last webinar about uh, kind of structuring some of these things, and so for this webinar. Um, I'm going to dive a little bit into kind of the structure of uh, a SOC or a secure operations center that might be built for an MSSP type of environment. So I've had the privilege of building out three of these uh, to date for MSSPs specifically uh, that do nothing but security services. And so I'm going to go through some, uh, kind of a, a bare bones um, outline for everyone here. And then uh, and we can dive into some questions too if they come up. Um, but I, I wanted to give you kind of an, an overview of everything that's encompassed and what's needed um, to build that MSSP. And then as an, as an MSP, you can uh, choose to build out an entire infrastructure like this or just take bits and pieces and uh, add them to your current clientele um, and different product lines. So hopefully this is a benefit. Uh, so the first thing you want to take a look at is, is what are you going to offer as part of your security services? Uh, and there's usually three parts to a security service offering from an MSSP. So you have uh, managing of technologies, you have the monitoring of technologies and existing technologies, and then security services on top of that. We've gone into a lot of length on security services, so I'll kind of breeze through those when we get to it, but I uh, wanted to include them here just for a comprehensive view. Um, so let's talk about management. So on the security side of things, there's different technologies. Uh, but um, you kind of got to figure out what you want to offer and how you want to offer it and how it's going to complement your existing services. So in the firewall world, there's, uh, there's lots of different pieces to a firewall that can be managed, and your contract should be very clear as to what you do and what you don't do, um, whether you're actually reselling the firewalls or uh, you know just managing the client firewalls and then what your responsibilities are, whether they're security policy routing, VPN, um, wireless. Some uh, firewall technologies include wireless. Sometimes wireless is a totally different technology, but whether or not you're responsible for that and whether or not you're charging for those services. Um, and then pro services. So uh, at the MSSPs I worked for, we did a lot of pro services around firewall management. So we would go and do, we would audit the firewall policy once a year and make sure that it's adding efficiencies to the firewall, make sure that uh, there aren't any gaping holes. I remember looking at one security policy and there was a, uh, a temporary rule that had been in place for almost seven years um, that allowed someone complete access to the network because they had to work on something or fix something. So those are the kinds of things that can come out of that. Um, uh, conversion, so if you're moving from one technology to another, you should probably charge for those conversion services and things of that nature. So 
Uh, those are all things to consider on the firewall side. And then um, included here is some other technologies that are typically managed by MSSPs. So an IDS or IPS, whether it's part of the firewall or not, should be a separate service. Uh, web filtering, uh, network threat detection, uh, similar to what George was talking about, but um, you know, it's it's the visibility into the network that's more than just log management, right? So a lot of the times these are deep packet capture solutions uh, that are giving uh, anomalous behavior um, and alerts based on what's happening in the network. EDR, we've talked about this on a few occasions. So this is visibility into your endpoints and what they're doing um, from a forensic level. So understanding exactly what's happening on a machine, what has happened, what registries have been touched, what disk writes have happened, things of that nature. Uh, your antivirus and then vulnerability scanning is uh, often a technology that can be managed. It could also be a service. It kind of depends on how you want to structure these things. All right. Now let's go into monitoring a little bit. So if I were to, to classify what an MSSP does, I would say that uh, it, it's all around monitoring. So there's there's some management, there's some security services, uh, but most every MS, MSSP that I've ever worked with has done a considerable amount of marketing and their architecture is built around their monitoring infrastructure. Um, so what that means is, is that it seems to be about 80 to 90% of what they do and how they do it and a lot of the value that's, uh, that justifies the big price tag and the large costs, and things like that. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're, you're monitoring all the right things. So everything that was listed on the last page can be monitored, right? Inputs and outputs, whether firewalls are accepting or denying, whether your IDS has been triggered or not. Um, one of the things that was interesting to me about the target breach a few years ago was that they had the right tool in place. They had FireEye, which identified the breach uh, but it was going to an email address that the IDS and IPS logs uh, alerts were going to. And whoever was monitoring that, the security administrator or analyst, uh, was so accustomed to seeing false positives and alerts from the IDS, IPS, that they totally ignored the one from FireEye. Um, and it took them months uh, to identify that risk and um, that vulnerability, that attack, and do something about it. So these IDS, IPS, um, tools, if they're in your customer environment, are extremely painful, and they have a hard time monitoring and managing them. Um, you know, good a good tool that's tuned well will probably give you, you know, 30 to 40 alerts a day in a you know a thousand device environment. So there's a lot of overhead, and most of that stuff is just white noise. Um, and so being able to sort through that is interesting. Um, web filtering, network detection, and all that. Um, one of the things that I think happens in a, a more mature environment is vulnerability scanning. So if you can build into your monitoring intelligence like, okay, if the vulnerability scanner has identified a Linux weakness and we're seeing attacks on the IDS IPS against that very same Linux weakness, then you need to wake somebody up. You get somebody out of bed. We need to make a change on the firewall. We need to block this type of traffic. So the more information you can have in your monitoring system, the better equipped you're gonna to be to be able to make decisions and make them fast. Uh, and we'll go into process a little bit in just a couple of minutes. Um, authentication logs are a big deal for HIPAA. Most of HIPAA is written around understanding who's logged into a machine and who touched what. Um, so being able to bring those into one place, being able to store them for six years as required by HIPAA uh, is a big deal and, and could justify the cost of a monitoring service for your customers. Now, bringing all this information together is important. And so one of the, the tools that's often used by MSSPs is a SIM tool, which stands for Security Information and Event Monitoring. And what that basically means is, is, is it's centralized log monitoring with security intelligence included with it. Um, SIM tools are not cheap. So building out an infrastructure like this may or may not be a good fit for your MSP. Um, but I'll kind of show you how to do it, and then you can pick and choose what you want to do and what not. So at the core of the infrastructure of an MSSP is typically a SIM, something that can collect all these logs, bring them into one place, and can identify pretty easy to catch vulnerabilities and do correlation like what I was talking about. Um, you know, if you're seeing uh, attacks come against your firewall from China and their SSH attacks, and you look into the log information on the Linux server and you see that they're 
they're super simple uh, passwords that they're trying, there's nothing really happening there, you may just let that attack go on and let that attacker burn themselves out um, because blocking them will let them know that there's something that needs to, to change in their attack strategy. Um, but having the intelligence to do that, you have to have intelligence from the firewall, you have to have intelligence from uh, the web server that's being touched, uh, and usually IDS intelligence. And so you can, you can write a rule in a SIM that says, if I see an accept from the firewall, and I see that attack on the inside of the network from my IDS, and I'm seeing that traffic um, you know, on, in the logs on the web server, then notify me, uh, send me an email, or put it on the dashboard things like that. Um, SIM tools, there's a bunch of them, and most of them don't do what you want to do. So uh, look at what they do and look at what they don't do, and then determine what makes the most sense for your clients, what you're trying to, to meet. Um, so try to find something with a lot of uh, flexibility. Uh, when you start looking at SIM tools, they're going to tell you you should point everything at the SIM. You should point all logs and everything coming from your Windows servers and your application servers and your IIS logs and your firewall logs and you should see everything going on in your environment and the reason they tell you that is because most sim tools are priced by um, number of logs or by amount of data if you take a look at Splunk for example it's uh, gigabytes on the drive and it collected in a day uh, most of that information is not necessary and will only create white noise and you're just gonna have to filter all that out uh, so instead I'd start with a very small set of rules so there is a uh, a great document from SANS, S-A-N-S, that can give you information on what types of information you want to see in a, an incident or in a, an event. And if you start with uh, that information and do correlation on that, you're going to have a much more manageable uh, monitoring environment, and then you can add things as there's needs. Uh, you're going to want to stay nimble to compete in this space. So you've got big giants like SecureWorks and Optiv and OrtLogic that have been doing this for years. Uh, but the biggest challenge that I hear from other CISOs um, as to those offerings is that they're commoditized, um, they're very basic, they're not very flexible at all, and every environment has uh, its unique challenges. Uh, so, for example, at eFolder, we've got uh, 30 or 40 different regulations that we have to meet to keep all of our MSPs happy, right? So MSPs want to be able to sell into the federal space and into the healthcare space and, and all those types of things. So we're looking at... Uh, a lot of privacy stuff. We're looking at a lot of, um, you know, information around regulation. So in the federal space, there's all these rules about, um, you know, the touching of files. Uh, in a lot of environments, you don't need to log that type of information. Um, but in our case, we do. And so making sure that you've built out um, a customized approach to viewing what's important to you uh, is going to be huge here. And it's going to be a differentiator. It's going to allow you to go up against an Optive and, and say, you know, look, they may, um, you know, have this great big sock and this, this very pretty data center. Uh, but at the end of the day, how much value are they giving you from the alerts? If they send you a report once a week and it, it offers you, it doesn't tell you exactly what happened or what you need to do about it, customer, then um, how much value is that really to you? Or is it, are you just paying for a service that's not going to protect you from an actual security event? Um, so structuring this from a people perspective is going to be key. So here's how I've, I've structured mine in the past. And, uh, like I said, some of this may be of value, some of it won't, uh, but we have basically three roles. So you have an operator. Uh, this is someone who sits there and reviews the notifications. Every time the SIM has a correlated rule that pops up, it pops up a little alert on the dashboard. And this operator's job is to look at that alert and decide if something needs to happen with it. Is this a false positive? Is this uh, a big deal? Or is it something beyond my expertise? Uh, and so that you want to build some case management in here. So you have a record of everything that takes place. And the operator will be someone who has security experience, uh, but may not be a security guru. So we used to hire folks out of um, uh, a local community college that had security degrees. So they would get a technical degree we would hire them, we'd, we'd train them for a couple weeks on what to look for, what kinds of events to, to look into. And it, they had the knowledge to, to make that determination. Like, oh, I've seen this 100 times on this network. This is a false positive. I'm going to ignore this. Or this is brand new. It's coming from China. And it looks like they actually accessed this server. So I need to do something about this and I need to escalate it. 
Uh, when they escalate it, they're going to escalate it to an analyst. This is a more senior security person, uh, someone who uh, verifies the, the activities of the operators. They might go in and look at some closed cases, make sure they didn't miss something. Um, they're the ones that are setting up the correlation rules. And, uh, and a lot of that's based on interactions with the customer. So we used to do a, a weekly review. The analyst would sit down with each customer on a weekly basis and go through, here's what we've seen. Here's the activity that we've seen this week. Here's some low and slow activities. So maybe we're seeing, um, you know, 10 or 15 um, attempted logins on this critical server a week. Uh, this is something that might take, you know, four months for someone to actually compromise a server. But if we leave it alone, they'll eventually get there. So this is something we need to address. We should block this IP. Um, what things are important to the customer? What things should be reported on? Uh, and you build a custom service for each customer. Uh, so the an analyst also should have some people skills uh, because they're going to be interacting with customers a lot. And then they can be looking for other services and offerings. There can be a sales aspect to them as well. And then these tools require a ton of tuning and touch up and they're always breaking. Um, agents are always breaking and not collecting data, things like that. So you want someone on the technical side. This may be one of your, um, you know, engineers, on the IT side that just happens to to have another technology on their uh, their plate, that they're also uh, fixing things for the SIM. They're also making sure the firewall is creating logs and configured properly and things like that. Uh, so those are kind of the three roles that I usually see in a SOC environment. And then you want to build on top of that. So you want to automate all of this stuff because having, you know, tons of human beings sitting there uh, trying to make security decisions becomes pretty inefficient once you start adding 20 or 30 customers to the mix. Uh, the way that we automated it was a very manual process. So we would create these run books and each customer had a run book. So this was like a three ring binder that sat on a bookshelf that had the customer's name in big letters on the side. And if there was an event that required immediate attention, let's say a, a web server was compromised, we were confident it was compromised. We'd go grab the run book and there'd be a great big emergency number on the very first page at the top. We'd say, call this in case of emergency. And we would call is usually a security person or an IT person on the other end. And we would tell them, we think this server's compromised. We think you should shut it off. And then you work with that customer uh, to whatever degree your contract requires. Um, so these are detailed procedures for each client. Um, it'll be, what does their report look like? What kinds of things are they interested in? What type of business are they interested in? Uh, what are their networks look like, right? Are all their networks 10.0.0 uh, .0 .0 RFC 1819 space or uh, did they have something customized or something weird or what are their external networks? So you can tell whether an attack is coming from an internal source or an external source. All that information is in the run books. Um, you want to write scripts for repetitive tasks. So there's certain things you'll just do every once in a while. Uh, this could be change management. So when a customer wants a change in their firewall rule, they've got a new piece of software that they need to get through the firewall. Uh, they might send in a change request, which would be in a form over an email or through your ticketing system. Uh, and those types of things. Um, write scripts for any time you can do a repetitive task. And then in the last few years, there's been a new technology, this security orchestration technology, uh, that has made this a lot easier. So uh, a SOAR tool can be used to take information out of the SIM and create um, an actual workflow based on it, and it can do a lot of these services itself. Right. So you can see in the little screenshot below, uh, there's a phishing workflow, right? So the attachments of the URL are found in the email, and then how does that end? How does it go from there? And this product, I think, is called Swimlines. This is not one I've used personally, but uh, uh, it looked pretty simple and easy to use, so I wanted to present it to you. But the idea is anytime you can have a computer doing something, you don't have to pay a human being to do it. Um, and so these SOAR uh, technologies can be super helpful. Yep. And then on top of all the monitoring, uh, we should probably readdress services. So this is, these are security services that you can add as part of uh, an MDR or an MSSP or, um, you know, an MSP that's offering security services. Uh, you can resell products. So there's a lot of money in uh, being a reseller, depending on the technologies that you work with. So if you build a part, get involved with a partner program with someone like a, a Fortinet or a Palo Alto or, 
um, something like that, then you can uh, make money on the resale of the products, make money on the ongoing licensing, uh, and then charge for professional services. Um, most small enterprises are accustomed to the idea, uh, small and medium enterprises are accustomed to the idea that if they get a brand new security technology, it's going to require professional services to get it in place and working initially. Um, so you can build, uh, you know, maybe a 40-hour engagement or something, putting in some firewalls and switching from their current vendor to you or something like that. Uh, firewall policy reviews, we talked about that. It was usually done annually. Uh, vulnerability scanning, I think we talked about in another um, one of our webinars, number two or three or something like that. But uh, one of the things that I wanted to remind everyone here is any company that has to have PCI certification, uh, requires that they scan their external network with a vulnerability scanner from an approved ASV. And so if you have some interest in those types of clients, it might be worthwhile to go get yourself approved so that you can be their PCI solution of choice. And then you can start to build a monitoring offering around that. And then pen testing, building out a pen testing uh, department and uh, hiring some of that talent and, and offering that as part of your services as well. All right, so that is a very quick overview of what we are doing from an MSSP perspective. Um, and hopefully some of that information will be valuable to you um, when you build out your own security environments and things of that nature. I don't see any questions in the chat. If anybody has any, why don't you send them out right now? Otherwise, we will go through and um, end for the day. Sam, you see anything? No, not yet. Uh, I just wanted to mention that we will be sending a follow-up email to everyone that registered um, with the slides, the video, the presentation, and our handout as well. Oh, we got a question. Oh, we just got a thanks. That's it. Thanks, thanks from Renee. So that handout will cover most of the, the architecture that I kind of put, ran through today. So hopefully that's of value to you guys. So doesn't look like any questions. All right. So. Well, thank you, everyone, for your time today, and we will see you next time. Thank you, George. Much appreciated. Thanks. Thanks, everybody.